All right, we'll go ahead and get started with quarterback Ian Book. Ian, your first question will be from Tim Priester. Ian, when um, Clemson flattened out their pass rush against you and took away some running lanes, what, what can you do, you personally in the offense in general, to help offset that? And, and also, Alabama has shown uh, a little bit of weakness at times on third down. How do you guys take advantage of that? Yeah, the first one is um, just going to get through the progressions. Obviously, Clemson did a nice job of that, of, uh, you know, keeping me in the pocket. And, uh, you know, I, I felt that and knew that and, uh, you know, tried to fix that in the second half. Just wanted to stay in there a little bit longer and go through the progressions. And um, that's what I got to do this week as well, you know, on Friday against Alabama. You know, they got a really athletic defense and uh, they'll probably do the same thing. So, you know, when it's open, take it. Like I've talked about it before. It's a fine line of knowing when I can run and knowing when to, you know, stay in there. So I've been working on that all year and uh, I'm going to just try to display that on Friday. And, you um, what was the second question? Missed it. Yeah, how do you, t uh, Alabama has um, struggled a little bit on third down. They're giving up 40% conversion rate. How do you take advantage of that? Yeah, uh, just about being consistent. Uh, we got to focus on the small details. Um, you know, we hurt ourselves in the ACC championship game by, you know, not really focusing on the present and maybe looking to, you know, looking in the past at bad plays or looking too far in the future at what we needed to do. We just got to focus one play at a time, um, especially on third down and uh, the rest will take care of itself. And third down uh, is huge. It's about situations. And we've been focusing on that all, you know, these two weeks with our team and with our offense and understanding situational football and uh, how to react and the best, the best plays for that and the best way to, you know, execute, execute certain plays. So, Third down's huge. It's how you win games. We want to win that third down battle. And uh, that's what we plan on doing. We'll go next to Holly Rowe. Ian, this is very hard hitting journalism. I have two questions. First, um, the, the mustache. Could you let me know what's happening on your upper lip? And then my uh, second question, my second question, my real one is, uh, Alabama really presses their cornerbacks are so so physical and you don't get a lot of space is how do you know what's open and be very specific you know with your throws and your windows knowing how they press and, and play yeah first one is I will be shaving this mustache uh, it's just for fun I uh, just left it just because I'm actually going to get a haircut and, and shave here in the next day or so uh, second is yeah I mean obviously Alabama's defense is really good uh, the corners you know do an excellent job of you know, pressing and just doing really, you know, really good at man coverage. And uh, it's about timing routes. It's about understanding where our, our guys should be at the right time and trust. It's about chemistry we worked on this whole entire year. And uh, now it's time to go display that. And, you know, I believe in our guys and um, I respect their guys. I understand what they can do. And I've seen it, you know, this whole entire year. So it's going to be a great matchup. And that's what you ask for in these games. You know, every team's talented. So, you can't get away with much. It's about, you know, focusing every single play and the small details will really, really, really matter. And, you know, whoever can focus on those small details, you know, the whole entire game, every play will end up winning. We'll go next to Patrick Engel. Ian, besides the obvious that he's a 6'6 six, six guy who can hurdle defenders, what made Michael Mayer so easy to trust so early in the year, especially on third down? Uh, just the way he carries himself, you know, from the first day I met him, yeah, someone that just wanted to come in and learn everything immediately, you know, that's huge. You know, sometimes a freshman might want to take a back seat. And it wasn't Mike, you know, he came here, he can do everything. Uh, he's just fun to be with, he cares. And I think care factor is, is, is everything, especially when I'm the old guy here and you see a freshman come in and just want to learn immediately. So, well, he's somebody I trust from day one. And uh, he was somebody that was, you know, begging me to go out in run routes and that's that's what you want as a quarterback so excited for him excited for his future he's somebody i trust obviously you know third down's been big uh but every down you know mike mike can really win i believe those 50 50 matchups you know that i'm really confident that mike can go up and, and get the job done we'll go next to tim o'malley Ian, circling back to the cornerbacks of alabama coach reese and coach kelly were very complimentary of number two patrick certain just wondering what the fine line is when someone is that talented in terms of testing him and the trust factor against, um, you know, some type of discretion. And, and do you ever look, do you come off a corner 
a little quicker when he's that good in your progressions. Yeah. I mean, yes, he's really good. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And really it just means you got to be on time. And if you're late, he's going to, he's going to take it. And uh, he's a really good corner. who's going to play a lot of football for a lot of years uh, in the future. So you got to be on time. You got to be confident that you've made the right read, the right choice. And then at the end of the day, you got to trust your receivers to go out and help you out. And um, that's really what it's about. You can't really be last lackadaisical. You can't be late. And uh, that, that you don't want to find that out the hard way. So, um, but we know he's there. We know, you know, how he plays. We study a lot of film on him. So it, it's going to be really good. I'm not saying, you know, you can't throw the ball there ever, but you know, that he's just, uh, He's really good corner. There's no doubt about that. And it's about being on time, especially from, you know, my perspective as a quarterback. We'll go next to Pete Sampson. Ian, I wanted to ask you about going back to seven on seven days with Najee Harris and just sort of what you got out of that experience playing with him, but also, um, you know, just sort of leading a guy who was already sort of five star, five star, all everything back then. Um, what you got out of that as a player? Yeah, he was, I mean, first off, he's just a great kid, you know, from day one. And I met him. He's an awesome guy to play with. And uh, I just remember going down to L.A. and having a seven-on-seven -seven tournament. And uh, the plan was if we were ever down, you just throw it up and Najee would go catch it. And he was playing receiver for us, and he did that. And that's how we were able to win some games. And uh, he was by far the best player I played with at that time. There's no doubt. And uh, he's still one of them for sure. So he's an unbelievable player, really good person. You know, happy for him. He'll he'll be playing a lot of football in the future as well. And uh, our defense has got to step up. It's a great challenge for us. I think our guys are excited for it. But just to be able to play with him when, you know, he was a five-star, you know, big-name recruit and to be on, you know, our seven-on-seven -seven team together it was awesome. And uh, it really was just a 50-50 ball. Just throw it up to Najee and he'll go get it. And he, he did that pretty much every time. So it was good. We'll go next to AP Stedham. Uh, yes, good morning, Ian. Uh, Ian, you had a chance to be around other players being recruited, such as Najee Harris. Uh, when you're approaching Alabama, have you ever given any of these players you met across the country who, who competed against Alabama a call to get an extra edge? I mean, you receive all the information from your coaches and everything, uh, obviously, but have you ever called some of these players that have competed against Alabama? And, and is there any other team besides Clemson that might remind you of Alabama that you played against? Um, I would say... I mean, I haven't played Alabama yet, but I would say probably Georgia is my guess. I think they play, you know, similar type of football, and we were able to play Georgia last year. So that was an unbelievable matchup. We weren't able to come out on top on that one. But, again, we, I think they play similar. And um, I haven't reached out to anybody, you know, to see who's played Bama. But, you know, I've watched a ton of film with the coaches, and, uh, you know, we know what they're capable of. They're a really good team. And we're just excited for the matchup and uh, just to be able to play Alabama at the Rose Bowl and be one of the four teams that has the opportunity to win a national championship is everything that we wanted this year. You know, it's, it's, we've got two goals. One's to graduate and one's to win a national championship. So we are here, we have that opportunity and uh, we just feel fortunate enough to, to get that shot and we want to make the most of it. And we will wrap it up today with Pete Byrne. Hey Ian, you were able to, uh you know, help lead this program to the playoffs. Your first year as a starter now is a, as a fifth year, you're back in the playoffs. I'm just curious what it means to you to be able to finish your college career on the stage and, and what it would mean further to, to finish it off the way you want to. Yeah. Um, just fortunate uh, to be able to be in the playoffs twice in my career is, is unbelievable. Um, we just got a great, good program here in Notre Dame that gets it done. And we gotta, we gotta go finish it though. We were able to make it there in 18 and get close, but we didn't finish the deal. And we get another opportunity now with a lot of guys on the team who played in that game are now older, you know, more mature, better leaders, uh, better football players. And uh, now we get that chance and we want to finish it the right way. You know, we had a bad, bad taste in our mouth since that 18 game for a lot of the guys that played in it. So just to be able to end my uh, college career at the biggest stage, I mean, the Rose Bowl has been a game I've been watching since I was a little kid. And uh, just to be in the playoffs, we want, we want to finish it the right way. We truly have an opportunity and uh, it starts with believing, you know, we believe we can win. We believe that we can win a national championship this year and that's where it matters. And that's where it starts. And um, it's just an unbelievable opportunity for this team.
And these guys believe it's been a fun week, a, a couple of weeks of preparation. We're just excited to get out to Dallas and go play on the biggest stage. That's why you come to Notre Dame. So we're here, ready to do it.